Hello, Sector Watchers, and welcome to this second episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday, the 8th of October. This is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to sectors, relative strength, and or rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Kempenaar, and I'm your host for today's show. Uh, as you know, I really would like to make this an interactive show, so your voice is important, and I encourage everybody to participate in any discussions or ask questions. I'll try my best to manage and answer all your input through the various channels that are available. You can see the various handles on the screen right now. Obviously, email and social media is open 24-7, and the live chat is open right now during the show. Uh, we will keep an eye on what's coming and possibly answer as much as possible while we are on air. And here is what we'll be looking at today. Um, we're going into a short review of what has happened in asset class and sector performance since we last spoke, so that's one week ago. I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, of what I learned and saw in the EFTA conference uh, last week and where I did a short presentation uh, and shared some RRG research results with the audience, and I'm going to share them with you as well. Then we'll have a short break. After the break, we're going to hit up the, um, the Slido chat box on the screen, and we'll see what questions you've come up with, if you have any, of course. Uh, and I'll try to answer them as good as possible uh, during the show when that's possible. And then we'll have a, uh, a sector view going forward, where we'll try to walk through all 11 sectors versus the S&P 500 uh, through RRGs and the regular charts. Okay, um, let's start with my screen and do some reviews. Well, here is the RRG with some asset classes on the left, and on the right-hand side, we have the performance of last week. Now, there's a little trick here that I want you to know. Um, the RRG is set to five days daily, and you can see the performance actually in the table on the right. And if you click on the percentage change, you will be able to sort on that performance. Now, if you bring up a perf chart, you will see the actual performance. So the RRG will show you the trends. And on the right-hand side, we have the perf chart, perf chart, which is also sorted. Performance sort is on my screen on. And now you have to do six days to mimic it. It's like it's a little counting uh, thingy, but if you put six days on the perf chart and five days on the RRG, um, you will have the same performance. So, for example, T bonds have been, been doing very well since last week, about one percent, and you'll see that is matching the top of the list in my uh, in my table here. And the worst asset class last week was SPY. Well, we've all seen what's happened in the markets. So uh, it's been down minus 1.2 at yesterday's close, and it's even lower today. And we're matching that here. You want to see how that went during the last week? You simply scroll back one, two, three, four, five days on the RRG, and you'll see exactly how these asset classes have moved relatively to our VBINX benchmark. So last week when we were speaking, this was the picture that we were looking at. And then one, two, three, four, five days later, here we are. So you'll see um, a massive improvement for the fixed income related asset classes and uh, further weakening, I have to say, for SPY and commodities. Now, if we bring up a similar image for the sectors, we'll load up the sector ETFs here, and i am bring up my sector perf chart right here. And I'll click that off. And then here there is <laughs> there's even another extra thingy that you, you need to take care of because this one is actually live. So you see that this one is actually taking into account today's prices. So to make it match the perf chart on the right, we need to scroll back one day and then you'll see, make it visible for everybody and then we'll rank it on performance. You will see that, um, is that right? I need to make this six. That's what I just explained to you. And there we go. Real estate minus almost unchanged. And then energy minus 3.9. And that's all the way back. So here we have what's happened in the S&P sectors over the last five days 
one, two, three, four, five. Again, here is the image that we saw last week when we were speaking, and we saw already utilities, real estate, uh, a little bit more defensive sectors pushing into either the leading quadrant or a strong RRG heading. And we saw energy, financials, industrials uh, weakening and into the weakening quadrant. And that basically that trend continued during the week when one, two, three, four, five utilities is now all the way up there. But that, by the way, they're having a weekday today, but this is to match the perf chart on the right. And you see that energy was actually the dog of the week uh, together with materials and industrials. They lost like over 3%. I think the trend here is pretty clear uh, and energy is now inside the weakening quadrant. All right, this is it for, um, for the review so far. Uh, we'll get back to the sectors uh, later on in the show when we'll do a full roundup of all the sectors in the S&P 500. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is the, um, the IFTA conference last week that was held in Cairo, Egypt. Um, I went there initially just as a delegate, but when um, one of the speakers dropped out due to unforeseen reasons and uh, some personal issues, um, he asked me if I could step in and uh, do a little presentation on RRG and then especially the more quantitative uh, aspects of RRG, which I was happily to do, of course. Um, while I was there, uh, the other speakers, uh, very interesting. It's always, it's always a good event um, because you see a lot of peers in, uh, in the industry and in your field. But because the EFTA conference is very internationally orientated, it travels around the world. It's in a different city, uh, on a different place on the globe every year. You also so meet uh, a lot of People you probably otherwise wouldn't meet. I mean, this was in Cairo, Egypt. That's not like a mainstream financial hub, but it has a very vibrant technical community. Um, the Egyptian Society of Technical Analysts actually has, I believe, around eight or 900 members, which is very impressive, I have to say. And they are very, very active. So it's always good fun to meet with these new and young people getting into the field, and they have some very interesting ideas. Uh, this year's conference, um, Although it wasn't, the theme was History Speaks, but from what I've seen from all the presentations, there were a lot of people uh, applying Elliott Wave. And that was a little bit of a surprise to me because I, I think that was a, it's, it's getting into a new revival. Uh, and they, have, they made uh, Robert Tractor and his son actually coming over to do a presentation. Now, Bob Prechter is obviously a well-known name. Uh, his son is Elliot Prechter. And although I'm not a, uh, a big user of um, uh, of Elliott Waves. Uh, I think the, uh, the presentation of his son, Elliot, was very interesting because he is working on a project to computerize Elliott Wave analysis in a, what they say, proper way. So without shortcuts, without hacks. Uh, and that showed actually some pretty, uh, some pretty cool results. Um, not necessarily from an Elliott Wave perspective, but for me, it was what we can do with computers. We can make all these very subjective and, and difficult rules that Elliott Wave Theory has into some computer language and make the computer analyze those charts. Another uh, very interesting presentation was from a guy named Rolf Wetzer. He, um, he's actually German, but he lives in Switzerland. And he is a, uh, he's a doctor, doc Herr Dr. Rolf Wetzer. And he did a presentation on uh, risk management, and I won't go into all details, but I'll show you one thing that he showed, and it's on my Twitter feed actually, which you see here uh, at RRG Research. And I think this quote was absolutely fantastic. Remember, this guy is talking about risk management in the financial world. If you if you try to play with um, uh, with models, with money management, with signals, uh, buy signals, sell signals, how much should you buy, how much should you sell, how big should your position be? And he brought up this image and quote of Mario Andretti, which says, if everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. Um, and I can absolutely see that in auto racing. Uh, but he's, he has a point in, um, in investing as well. If, if, if everything seems under control, you're probably not pushing hard enough with your investments. And, and I thought that was a great analogy. Now, for the work that I presented um, at the conference, that was a little bit more quantitative uh, in nature, um, which we are, a lot of the things we are not 
and I, I should say not yet be able to do on stockcharts.com, but I'm sure that we will be getting there uh, anytime soon or, or sooner, rather sooner than later. And that is some quantitative testing. And I mean, a lot of you have asked, you know, scanning for RRG, testing for RRG. That is not possible yet. We can do it on other platforms. Um, and uh, at a new, at another show, I will talk you through the basic interpretations again of RRGs. But one of the early things that I did when I started using RRGs was was nothing else than um, using the crossovers of 100 in the RS ratio um, as a buy signal and crossing back as a sell signal. And later on, I because. S signal testing is completely different from uh, from portfolio level back testing, uh, in my opinion, and and I I changed and I wanted to do some some work on portfolio level back testing, which means creating an actual portfolio and tracking that through history. So what we did here is a test that buys the top five spider ETFs, spider ETFs, and hold a 20% position in each ETF, and we're going to rebalance that every month. Um, and the test period in this case, and now this is important, is the 1st of January 2000 to the end of December 2013. Why did we do that? Because the red line here is the S&P 500, and as you can see, that's almost a flat period in the market, a big down move, a big up move, a big down move, and then a big up move again. If we apply that theory to the spider ETFs over that period using this rebalancing technique, you would actually uh, gain 5.5% per annum, while the index did 3%. So we beat the uh, index by 3%. So that's a 2.5% outperformance on an annual basis. Now, look at the sharp ratio of the system that's 0.35, and for the index is 0.18. They're not huge numbers, but the sharp for the strategy is much better than for the index. In other words, the index has much more volatility. Now, if we would have applied, oh, by the way, there's 131 trades over this period, so it's not super active. If we would apply that same rule to the 30 Dow stocks, and here we're buying the top quintile, so the top six position, and we monthly rebalance that, you'll see a completely different picture. You'll see uh, 11 percent annualized returns over three percent for the s p 500 um, and that's absolutely great that's that's a great improvement in terms of sharp it's also a super outperformance um, which basically backs my uh, my position that RRG and signaling works better on a lot of individuals than only a small subset now if we bring that to and here's <laughs> here's the shocking result or maybe like realistic result if you take this to a period which starts on right after our test first of january 2014 to today you see that we're sort of catching up with the index not very spectacular but remind you in that period the last five years the s p has been doing super great and we all know that relative strength really really starts to stand out when the market is going down or moves sideways. So for the for this system, for this relative strength, very, very basic RRG system to keep up with the index is sort of okay. But what I really like is the fact that we have a sharp ratio of 0.75 here, where the index is 0.71. So we're still beating it, but you can see that the sharp for the index went from 0.71 to uh, from 0.18 to 0.71. Now, this is the one that does the same trick with the Dow 30. So we're moving to the top quintile, buying six positions at 1666. We rebalance that every month, and you'll see that this system gains 13%, while the index gains 8.9. So we're actually gaining. But what's, what's actually absolutely great is that the sharp ratio now is over one. That's really, really, really uh, strong, while, of course, the index is still at 0.71. Now, these are. Uh, a couple of very, very basic system tests that I wanted to share with you. I will do a lot more work on this, and when I have new ideas, um, I will share them with you. But it absolutely proves to me that relative strength works absolutely great in sideways markets. It's even better in stock picking. And uh, you need to keep up with the index when the market is rising. It's super difficult to outperform on a sector basis in a rising market. And we're going to a little break right now, and after that, we're going to talk about some 
questions that you may have posted on the Slido box. Now, I need to absolutely get back to the box. Uh, Rach, I can't find my questions. Hey, Julius, I'll ask them. Yeah, bring it forward to me. Okay. So I'm, I'm messing, messing around here. I can't see where we are. Well, let's get to the first question is from Mona. How do you scroll backward five days on the RRG? Ah, all right, very good question. Um, actually, very easy. You can do that by um, either clicking back. So I'll, I'll bring up that chart here. If you, if you select the box with the slider, you can actually either grab that post and throw, scroll through history or use the left and right arrow keys on your, uh, on your keyboard. Uh, and that's it, that's, that's super simple. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, you go back and forward with your arrow keys and, and that'll do the job. Next one. Oh, sorry. Uh... <laughs> Question is from Betty. How do you sort the perf chart in the performance order? I missed that. All right. Yeah, that's a little trick. Um, right. There is the perf chart is right here. Let me let me load up just a let's see a uh, I don't know Canadian S and P sector indexes. Why not? You know, there are some Canadians here. So when you open it up at first, you'll see these Canadian sectors in this case, uh, and there are. Uh, unsorted and if you right click there comes a little box and you can say performance sort on and then it'll sort it based on performance and if you say performance sort off it'll go back to the original sorting and another thing that you may want to be aware of is the fact that you can actually rebase this perf chart so this one is now rebased at the smp uh, the smp tsx composite and if i click it off it is it is absolute return so if you click that one it is relative to the tsx composite tick it off and it's absolute and i can do that with any uh, group so if we go back to sector etfs this is now unsorted sort on here you go this is relative to the s p 500 if i tick it off it's in absolute terms if you want to make it relative to i don't know say technology you just tick that box and now this is all against technology so technology is the baseline now and this is what is there so that's how you do that next question is from mike and he asks can you change the inner day charts instead to daily <laughs> Uh, no, not yet. It's, uh, that is one of the things that I am pushing with the dev guys, but they've been very, very busy with the transition to the cloud and and um, and, and working on ACP. But definitely, that's one of, that's on the cards. Uh, having intraday data available for RRG. So uh, here in the checkbox we can choose daily or weekly i'd love to have that like you know what you have on a, on a normal chart if you like if you go like xlp here where we can have daily weekly all these different intervals available for rrg so um the answer to your question is no not yet i have to say all right let's um start to work are, are there any more or any me any super pressing questions because otherwise i'll move on to uh work my way through the various sectors no julius that's it for questions that's it all right then let's go um bring up the oh it's here so let's move to my weekly rrg because that gives me a little bit of a longer term image to work off and because we didn't really work our way through the sectors last week. We haven't really established a longer-term picture, uh, and I'd like to do that right now today. Um, here's the RRG right now, and this is what happened since last week. So you see there's not many, no, no super massive changes, no great hooks that have been taking place. Um, let me work my way through 
how shall we do that? Let's do that. Uh, let's sort it, because you know you can sort this table here on the various columns. Uh, so if I sort it on tail, I can sort it per quadrant. So I can work my way through the universe per quadrant. Um, if you like to do it in alphabetical order, you can sort it on uh, the alphabetic of the ticker symbol or of the name of the sector, or as we've seen, percentage change. Let's do it per quadrant right now and, and see if we can make that work. Now, I'm going to start inside the weakening quadrant. So we, we start in weakening, and then we go into lagging, and then we start with what is improving, and we end uh, the show with what's really good at the moment. So, by the way, this is if you if you highlight the line in the table, you can highlight the tail on the screen on the RRG to so make it stand out from the rest. And if you do that, you can actually uh, lengthen the tail and see the little bit longer term rotation. Let's put it at thirteen weeks. That's that's one quarter. So XLK inside the weakening quadrant. And what I always do is I always like to bring up the accompanying chart so that I can look at what's going on uh, on the RRG in combination with the price chart and my relative strength line. Uh, by the way, you can actually match that. So you see that our RS ratio is 101.2. That's roughly right here. And RS momentum is 99.4. That's just below that 99.5 level. So you're sure that you can actually match the tail position with the RRG line so that you're looking at the same thing. Um, from a price perspective, I think XLK looks like a little bit of a consolidation pattern. Uh, relative strength flattening, and that's why the RRG lines are rolling over. Technology is still, if you do the ranking system that we just did the um, uh, back tests on one, two, three, four. So it would still be in that portfolio, and and it looks justified because you know this could go either way in terms of relative strength. So so far, this is a uh, temporary setback within a longer term relative uptrend. So um, temporary setback for technology. Keep an eye on it. If it if it deteriorates further, we may have to take action. But for now, I'm still cool with having technology in a portfolio. If we move to energy, bring on the chart here. Um, I, I mean, we're looking at this chart right now, but from a relative perspective, the fact that energy is far away on the left, and again, on the ranking system, energy is the weakest sector in the universe. There's no doubt about it. And I really, really doubt whether energy is strong enough. Despite this vertical rise here, I think that is temporary in nature, and then we will see more weakness in energy going forward, at least before it will eventually lead the lead, uh, reach the leading quadrant again. And if we look at the uh, the price chart here, especially the relative strength, we see that this is uh, deteriorating further. This is a solid downtrend, and this is just hicking up. I think we will see more weakness, maybe a little bit of improvement in the short term, but on the long term, I don't really like energy uh, that all that good. Materials. This is a rotation that rotated. Uh, very shortly into leading, but then rapidly down there. And, and it now actually rotated inside the lagging quadrant. As you can see, that's quite a, let me zoom out. You can play with these zoom buttons here. If you really want to go into the detail and see what happened here, you see it jumped up and down again. So we had a very rapid rotation of materials while inside the lagging quadrant. And um, bring up the chart here. Uh, not super strong, and you see that this is, well, it's at a horizontal level, but all these highs are, although shallow, but they are lower. If we break below this support and relative strength, I think the move will accelerate lower, and the RRG lines seem to be starting to discount such a break already, uh, and this price chart doesn't look fantastic. I mean, if you have some a break of this low here, just above 54, that'll probably trigger further acceleration, so be very careful with materials. Financials, very important big sector, sort of similar quick rotation taking place here over the last few weeks. Let's scroll through that. We have it weakening, going up, and then 
look at that weird rotation that we had here. That is, it, it tries to pick up, but it doesn't work. And that is, that gives me the idea that this is like a renewed lag down in terms of relative strength. Um, it's not yet visible here, but again, just like with materials, if we start breaking support in relative strength, this will accelerate lower. And on the price chart, upside is very, very limited while there are definitely downside risks. And discretionary, discretionary, that, that's a weird sector going over the last few weeks. We, it tries to do well, it drops, and then it tries to do well, and now it's inside lagging and it immediately starts to improve. So I find this sector uh, pretty hard to read at the moment. Um, probably just stay on the sidelines um, for the time being. It's, it's very close to uh, the 100 level. There is no very clear trend in relative strength, um, more aligned in line with the index. So I'd be very careful with, uh, with discretionary. Um, you know, if you hold it, you're probably not gonna gain a lot of alpha. Communication services, look at this rotation here. It went into leading, which is good. And then it hooks down and it immediately backs off into lagging again. This is a, uh, a, a straightforward hook. It's not rotating. Well, it had, a, a, I think it doesn't even have one observation inside weakening. So uh, this is, this is a, 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 a very solid weakening signal for the communication sector. Be very careful with this one. Uh, doesn't send a got a good lot of good news and again this has been sideways our g lines are picking up some downward movement uh this could be the one that starts to deteriorate further uh very rapidly um so that was for all the bad news now let's go for the good news uh which is utilities which has been the good news for quite a while already so, uh, this is uh this is including today so this was last friday's close and you see the improvement here and utilities is now based on uh, a ranking based on rs ratio the strongest sector um pretty much translating all the volatility and fear that is in the market into a safe haven and if you look at this price chart you know that's a strong chart you see that relative strength is trying to break to new high levels rg lines are tracking that move higher if we break that resistance in uh relative strength this will accelerate further and it will definitely benefit uh, on the price chart so you know even if, if you want to beat the s p 500 utilities probably should be in your portfolio right now just like real estate that's been a very good performer over the last few weeks not as good right now but you know the trend is definitely still up it's the second strongest uh, on the rs ratio and if you look at that from a real estate then you see that this is a very strong uh, trend as well. It's trying to break higher. Um, so real estate and utilities really are the cornerstone of your portfolio right now. They went through a little bit of a setback, but RS ratio is on the way back up. And then finally, we have, uh, this is in the good, I forgot. Uh, I'll speed up here. We go through... Um, Staples, the other one in your portfolio, cornerstone of your portfolio, very strong image. Uh, so utilities, real estate, staples, your defensive sectors are in play right now. And in the um, in our shopping list, in the shopping box, in the improving quadrant, I'm looking at healthcare, which is actually, uh, it, it rotated back down. It's moving down there. I'm not sure if that is going to make it. Uh, I'm not a very big fan of that price chart, so I'll be very careful. The industrials, on the other hand, are looking much better. And um, that will wrap it up to show with the industrials. Uh, this is testing support. The RS momentum is getting above there. So if we hold this, and especially when we can break above that resistance level, that'll be a very strong, uh, very strong sign for industrials. So we're going to wrap it up here uh this was the second episode of sector spotlight thank you for watching please keep those questions and suggestions coming so we can make sure that you and i are on the same page i hope to see you back next week same day same time every tuesday 10 30 to 11 a.m eastern thank you very much